my gang, let's meet the people who live in the Burns house, George and Gracie. in at the Burns' home today, we find George and Gracie discussing a topic that is much too familiar to all of us, the high cost of living. Oh, you'll be proud of me, George. I'm fighting the high cost of living tooth and nail. Well, that's swell. How are you doing? Oh, I'm smart. Before I buy anything, I ask the price. And if it's too high, I just refuse to pay the money. Well, good for you. Yes. For a month now, I've charged everything. <laughs> But uh, that's no advantage. The bills have to be paid. Yeah, but it still won't cost you any money. Why not? I'll pay them with a check. <laughs> Murder. Mm -hmm. And I got the idea out of my own mind. Simple, isn't it? Simplest one in record. <laughs> Let me see the bills. Well, they're right there in my filing cabinet. Oh, no, Gracie. Not that filing system again. For five years now, I've tried to find things on that Chinese puzzle. But, George, it's so easy. Everything is filed alphabetically. Now, which bill do you want first? The grocery bill. All right, look under T. <laughs> the grocery bill is under T. Well, sure. We buy our groceries at Beasley's Market. His market is two blocks down the street. T for two. <laughs> What if the market was four blocks down the street? I'd file it in the same place. T for twice two. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Here's the grocery bill. Holy smoke. Don't tell me eggs are this high. Oh, they're like diamonds, George. Before long, hens won't lay them on the ground anymore. They'll go right to the bank and make their deposit. <laughs> How about the meat bill? Where do I find that? Under C. Meat under C? Yeah. We buy our meat from the butcher. His name is Fleischenheimer. See if we can't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it is. Oh, no. Couldn't you find any cheap meat? Well, I tried, dear. See there on the bill? Ribs, 80 cents a pound. Shanks, 70 cents a pound. Oxtails, 60 cents a pound. Is that the best you could do? George, 
When you pass the tail, you're out in empty space. Gracie, you're just using the high cost of living for an excuse. Things can't be this high. But they are, dear. I don't believe it. This morning, I'll do the shopping. And if they charge these prices, I'll eat my hat. I'll make up the shopping list. What are we having for dinner? Boiled hat. <laughs> Let's go to the market. Hey, here's your hamburger, Mrs. Fowler. That'll be $7.80. Oh. Hey, would you like that delivered? No, thanks. I'll just put it in my purse. <laughs> All again. Can I wait on you, sir? Yes, I'd like three pounds of sirloin steak. Uh, three pounds of sirloin steak. <laughs> uh, tell me, are you a veteran? <laughs> no. Why? Well, I thought you could finance it on a GI loan. <laughs> Oh, look here. Yeah. How about a nice soup bone of steer beef? You can swing that on our 30-day credit plan. Don't buy that, George. He's been selling me meat from that same steer for two years now. I even know the steer's name. Charles. Charles? Yeah, every time I ask for a roast, he says, I'll give you a piece of chuck. <laughs> well, he's not giving me a piece of anything. We'll do without meat. Come on. You see, Gracie, the only way to bring prices down is to refuse to pay what they ask for things. Now watch me. <clears throat> Mr. Beasley. Oh, yes, Mr. Burns. How much for canned tuna? 70 cents a can. I won't pay it. Mm -hmm, that's right. We'll plant our own tuna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, get a, I get a kick out of your wife, Mr. Burns. She's so mentally adolescent. Oh, careful with those compliments. My husband's here. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go on with the shopping. I'll take a pound of butter. Uh, yes, sir. That'll uh, be one dollar. One dollar? Why don't you wear a mask instead of an apron? <laughs> Come on, Gracie. Let's go to the vegetable department. For cashier. How much for the sack of corn? How many ears have you got? Uh, well, two. Does he look like a freak? <laughs> well, now that you mention it... Never mind. <laughs> I have four ears of corn. That'll be ten cents each. Okay. Mm, wait a minute, George. You don't like corn without butter. Yeah, that's right. Better go back and buy a pound. Uh, you wait here. I changed my mind. I'll take a pound of butter. Uh, yes, sir. That'll be a uh, dollar ten. Dollar ten? A minute ago it was a dollar. Yes, there seems to be a gradual rise in prices. <laughs> well, I'll eat my corn without butter. Okay, miss. I'll take those four ears of corn. Yes, sir. That'll be fifteen cents each. But you said ten cents each. Oh, that was before the last price change. No, you better grab it, George, before it goes up again. Okay, here's your 60 cents. Say, George. What? You still don't like corn without butter. I know. Well, come on, I'll buy a half a pound. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said, a half a pound of butter. How much is it now, a dollar and a quarter? No, 90 cents. Well, you see, Gracie? I forced the price down. That's uh, 90 cents a half pound. <laughs> um, Mr. Beasley, charge it. And would you please help me carry something out of the car? The butter? No, my husband, he just fainted.
In order to get his mind off the high cost of living, at least temporarily, Gracie coaxed George to the local movie to see a matinee of Life with Father. We find them now just leaving the theater. Mm, wasn't that a wonderful picture, George? William Powell reminded me so much of my father. Father must be quite a man. Oh, he is. Proud, genteel, dignified, aristocratic, and the best delivery man at the fertilizer factory. <laughs> Hey, your father's a big man. Mmm, right on top of the heap. <laughs> so many things in life with father reminded me of my own family. The oldest boy going off to Yale and the young... Don't tell me anyone in your family went to Yale. My brother Willie. And was Harvard jealous. Harvard wanted oh, Willie? Oh, yes, but Yale wouldn't let him go. They said Harvard would just have to go on studying the theory of evolution from pictures. <laughs> Gracie, I don't want to hear any more about your family. Ah, you're still worried about the high cost of living, aren't you, dear? Yeah, I guess I am. Ah, you poor darling. If I could only make some money to help you. If... George. George, I've got an idea. What is it? I'll write a play about my family. It'll cost you about $5,000 to put it on, and it'll make millions. No, Grace. But family plays are all the rage now. I remember Mama, Life with Father, Mother wore tight. Gracie, I, I can no. make mine a combination. I'll call it, I remember Mama's Life with Father in tight. <laughs> no. And, and I'll get William Powell to play Father. And, and you can be one of his sons. Gracie, the idea is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, you're right. You play the father and he'll be the son. <laughs> Forget the play. Every time you get one of these ideas, I get in trouble. But I want to keep you from worrying about money, dear. You're heading for a nervous breakdown, and I want to help you. <laughs> this will do it. Now, Gracie, I'm going to NBC, and remember, you're not going to do a play about your family. Yes, dear. Or any other play. Yes, dear. Absolutely no play. No play. <laughs> Meredith, how do I go about putting on a play? Well, uh, first of all, you have to look around and find an angel. In Hollywood? <laughs> Just any place, so he's wealthy. Now, uh, Tommy Manville's been an angel several times. Yeah, he keeps sleeping back, though, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Gracie, uh, the term angel is really applied to a man who finances a play. Oh, oh, well, how about you financing my play, Meredith? Oh, I'd like to, but all my money's tied up. It is? Yes, I tied it up in my handkerchief, and I can't get the knot loose. <laughs> However, I could offer my services as an actor. Oh, have you had any stage experience? I was always prominent in the Mason City, Iowa Festival of Corn. <laughs> I uh, once portrayed a bloodhound in Uncle Tom's cabin. I bounded across the stage, sniffing with my nose to the ground. But apparently the critic thought I had my nose in the air. Really? Yes, he said I smelled to high heaven. <laughs> well, Meredith, I think you're just right for my play. But first, I've got to find a backer. Uh, don't you know any rich man? Well, let me see now. I read in the morning paper that Mr. Judson, the Texas oil millionaire, is in town, staying at the Plaza Hotel. Oh, he sounds like just the man. Oh, I'm sure I can get $5,000 from him. Why are you putting on a play, Gracie? Well, to help George meet expenses. The high cost of living has got him so worried, I'm afraid he'll have a nervous collapse. Well, you're a true blue helpmate, Gracie. George is a lucky man. I hope when Bill Goodwin and I get married, we'll do as well. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure you and Bill will be very happy together. <laughs> Bye, Mary. Bye. You, Mr. Judson, the Texas oil millionaire? Yep, that's me, ma'am. Well, howdy, partner. I sure am all fine glad to meet a fellow Oki. <laughs> Oki is a from Oklahoma, ma'am. I'm from Texas. Oh. Well, I sure am all fine glad to meet a fellow Texie. <laughs> I'm uh, Mrs. George Burns. Proud to know you. Uh, what part of Texas you hail from? San Francisco. <laughs> San Francisco's in California. Gosh, ain't Texas took that in yet? 
<laughs> oh, I like your spirit, ma'am. <laughs> you talk like a real Texan. Uh-huh. Mighty glad you fell for it. I mean, think <laughs> Yeah, I might have known a pretty little trick like you would be from Texas. Now, there's a healthy state. Now, look at me. Would you take me for 45? No, I hope to take you for 5,000. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I mean, I'd like you to invest some money in a play I've written. Oh, I'm afraid I don't know nothing about show business, ma'am. I've never seen no plays, never seen no movies, never even listened to the radio. Just stayed home and made $22 million. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've been sinking wells ever since I was a boy. When I was only 15, I brought in my first wildcat well. Uh, you were smart to switch to oil. <laughs> There's not much demand for wildcats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like your sense of humor, ma'am. <laughs> but I better stay out of this show business. Oh, please, Mr. Judson. I'm doing this play to help my husband. The poor man is practically out of his mind. Why, you fine, sweet, brave little girl. Why didn't you tell me? What? You're doing this to help your mentally unbalanced husband. Well, he, he is... I, I, know, I know how you feel. You see, uh, my wife ain't too bright. <laughs> now, see you, Mr. Judson. My husband... Now, just... you don't have to say no more, Mrs. Burns. I can sure find $5,000 for a woman whose husband is... Uh, shall we say, uh, peculiar? Let's say he's nuts to make it 10000 <laughs> It's a deal. I'll draw up a contract and then I'll telephone you. Oh, thank you. Why, not at all. Say, by the way, where's your husband? He's at NBC. Uh, uh, NBC. Uh, is that a mental institution? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, that's what it is. NBC, the National Booby Coop. <laughs> or, as uh, some people call it, the Nutworks. <laughs> well, thanks again, Mr. Judson. Goodbye. <laughs> Here's Meredith Wilson of the orchestra. just had a phone call, Gracie. Oh? A man wanted to speak to you. Oh? Said he was Mr. Judson, the oil millionaire. Uh-oh. <laughs> Said you'd been to see him. What for? Well, uh, the car needed a quart of oil. <laughs> Gracie, he mentioned $10,000. Yes, yes, that's why I didn't buy the quart of oil. I thought he was a little high. <laughs> Gracie, why did you go to see Mr. Judson? Well... All right, George, I'll tell you. Good. And don't give me another wild story. I want the truth. Well, Mr. Judson thinks that you're the world's greatest singer, and he'll give you $10,000 a week to advertise his oil company. Gee, for a minute, I thought you were coming up with a wild story. <laughs> from time to time in every climb, blessings come from above. <laughs> Do you think my voice will sell gasoline? Oh, yes, darling. Everyone who hears you sing will take gas. <laughs> well, I don't know. I... <clears throat> 
Come in. <coughs> Hi, Burnses. Hello, Bill. Give him a sample, Sugar Throat. Unleash those atomic consoles and sprayers with that radioactive voice. <laughs> From time to time and every climb, blessings come from above. Oh. <laughs> when you listen to that man, it's hard to believe he's human. <laughs> Ain't easy when you look at him, either. I mean, he, he doesn't sound like a man. When he sings, it, it's more like you've just heard a big bird. <laughs> Well, if he sings again, you'll hear the biggest bird. <laughs> Mind critic. Just wait till, I, wait till I get my own program for Judson's Oil. Yeah, now, George, you run, hop in the bathtub and vocalize. I want to talk to Bill. Okay. To some of them, and others pay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, phew. Bill, you almost ruined things. How? Well, Mr. Judson isn't going to sponsor George's singing. Well, he sounds like a sensible man. Actually, he thinks George is a lunatic And he thinks NBC is the national booby coop Like I said before, he sounds like a sensible man But Bill, don't tell George he, he doesn't know what I'm up to Gracie, I'm single, but I thought wives never did anything without their husband's permission <laughs> You are single, aren't you? <laughs> uh, come on, Bill, drop me at the beauty shop Yes? Uh, howdy. I'm Mr. Judson. I've come to have Mrs. Byrne sign this contract. Oh, well, I'm the one you want to see. I'm Mr. Byrne. You, you, you're her husband? Yes. Uh, well, now, <clears throat> I guess I'll be moseying along. No, no, no. I want to talk to you. Sit down. Uh, sure. Sure, anything you say. <clears throat> I thought they kept you at NBC. Oh, they do most of the time. <laughs> but now and then I sneak away. <laughs> well, uh, ain't it a hard place to get in and out of? No. I can, I can get you in if you want me to. <laughs> no, I, I ain't ready for that yet. <laughs> don't, uh, don't NBC have any guards? Yeah. But in Hollywood, it's hard to tell who belongs in there and who doesn't. <laughs> yeah. I reckon it is. Uh, could anybody come in to see you, Mr. Burns? Oh, no. See me, you gotta have a ticket. <laughs> You're one of the biggest ones there, huh? You bet I am. Of course, now and then I lay an egg. <laughs> I'd sure admire to see that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Burns, uh, what did you do that uh, got you put in there? I'll show you. Ain't misbehaving all by myself. Ain't misbehaving. I'm happy in the shelter. <laughs> That's what did it. And well, it might. <laughs> Thanks, Al. I'll sign that contract now. Give me your pen. Uh, no, no, please. I'd rather you didn't handle anything sharp. <laughs> huh? Besides, it's your wife's play I'm back in. Let her sign it. My wife's play, huh? Yeah, yeah, and she's going to use the money to cure your insanity. <laughs> she uh, told you, uh... Just wait till Gracie gets home. <clears throat> play after I told you not to. Telling Mr. Judson I'm a lunatic. I'm warning you, Gracie. I've had all I can stand. Well, I don't blame you, George. I'm just a no-good, troublemaking woman who does nothing but hinder you. You ought to get yourself a new wife. Huh? <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, yes, you should. Nothing but a millstone around your neck and you ought to send me back to my mother. Huh? <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. But I deserve it. I'm just a silly, thoughtless woman without a brain in my head. Huh? <laughs> that you are. 
Let's go back to the second one. <laughs> you ought to send me back to my mother. Huh? Come to think of it, that's not a bad idea either. Let's go back to the first one. Oh, never time. mind. <laughs> but, you, but you do deserve to be punished. Now, how do you think I should punish you? Well, oh, ooh, I've got a terrible punishment. No new clothes for the rest of the year. Okay, that's it. I'll just force myself to look at you wearing your old clothes. <laughs> look, Gracie, I'll let you off with no punishment if you'll promise that you'll never cook up another one of your wild schemes again. Yeah, I promise. But I, I don't want you to let me off so easy. I want to do something to make up for the trouble I've caused you. Well, okay. I, I've got it. I'll get William Powell to star in my play and give you all the money. Gracie. And I know just how to get it. Gracie. I'll tell Mr. Powell that you're a lunatic. Gracie. And it cost me lots of money Look, to Gracie. keep you in a booty Gracie. Trip, Gracie. And then... Bill Goodwin speaking. The Burns and Allen Show has been a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Music